Welcome to the Celtic Myth Pod Show, bringing the tales and stories of the ancient Celts to your fireside. Episode 12 The Song of Amagin. Welcome to the Celtic Myth Pod Show. I'm Ruth. And I'm Gary. We'll start, as always, by telling you how you can contact us. We would love to hear from you, so drop us an email at gary or ruth at celticmythpodshow.com or you can record some voice feedback for us by using the Avoca recorder on our website. You could also record a sound file for us on your computer and email that, and we could play it on the show. If you're a regular Facebook or MySpace user, then you can keep in touch with us there. Again, the details are on the Contact Us page on the website. We also use Twitter, so if you're looking for an up-to-the-minute news on the shows, there's lots of ways you can keep in touch. We'll start the show off with some news and views. Thanks to eagle-eyed listener Lowell, we discover that one of the episodes on our server has been corrupted. So if you've downloaded episode 3 and it's only 12 minutes long, rather than 26 minutes, you can get the whole episode by popping along to the episodes page on our website and downloading episode 3 from there. Thanks Lowell. And to download that episode, go to www.celticmythpodshow.com forward slash episodes. Now, Gary, can you bring us up to date with the story so far? The Sons of Mill finally break through the magic of the children of Danu and land on the shores of Erin. They demand recompense for the death of their kin, and negotiations take place. Now it is up to the Tuatha Dé Will they fight, flee, or come up with another plan? And yet... The great bard Amagin also has a trick or two up his sleeve. The long ships of the Sons of Meal ploughed through the sparkling waves around the coast of Erin, seeking a pathway through the magical mist. Their painted prows bit eagerly into the olive-coloured sea, splashing crystal spray over the grim faces of the men straining at the oars. And then they saw it, a rent in the mist revealing a wide river mouth and shouting with glee they pulled all the harder, and the ships leapt through to the clear waters into the bright sunshine of Inverskeen that is now called Kenmare Bay in the west of Munster. After disembarking they marshalled their weapons, and the host marched in good order as far as Sleeve Mish. There they were met by a queen of the Tuahadid Nan, and a train of beautiful women attending on her, and her druids and wise men following her. Hold, Amagin, bard. Have you come to conquer Erin? For if that is so, then curses will surely follow you. We are here by necessity. Then perhaps you should offer me a gift. What gift do you desire, lady? I desire that my name may be on this island. Tell us, lady. By what name are you known? My name is Bamba, wife of Mackerel, the Hazel King. Then, let it be a name for this island. They went on till they came to Sleeve Evelyn, and there another queen of the Tuatha Dé Danann met them, and her women and her druids after her. Hold, Emigin Bard. Have you come to conquer Erin? For if that is so, then curses will surely follow you. We are here by necessity. Then perhaps you should offer me a gift. What gift do you desire, lady? I desire that my name may be on this island. Tell us, lady, by what name are you known? 
My name is Fola, wife of Maquext, the Plough King. Then let it be a name for this island. They went on then, till they came to the hill of Wishnech, and there they saw another woman with her company coming towards them. And there was wonder on them while they were looking at her, for she was a wide-eyed, most beautiful queen, clothed in flowing raiment of emerald green. Warriors, I bid thee welcome. Long have our wise ones had knowledge of your coming. Yours shall be this island forever, and to the ends of the world there shall not be a fairer land. No race shall there be more numerous than yours. Good is that, and good is the prophecy. We will not give thanks to her for it, but to our gods and the strength of our arms. It matters not to you, for you will have no gain of this island, nor will thy children. For this gift, I ask for one in return, O sons of Mill and children of Briogan. What gift do you seek, lady? That my name be upon this island. Then tell us your name, Lady Fair. I am Eriu, wife of Magraine, the Sun King. Eriu, or Erin, will be its chief name forever. The sons of the Gael went on after that to ancient Tavir, or Druim Cain, as was its name at that time among the Tuatha Dé Danann, and before that, Liadruim, its name among the Fearbold. There the three sons of Kermit Honeymouth, son of the Dogda, that had the kingship between them at that time, held their court. They were Macquill, Macecht, and Macrain, the kings of the Hazel, the Plough, and the Sun. These three were quarrelling with one another about the division of the treasures their father had left, and the quarrel was so hot it seemed likely it would come to a battle in the end. And the sons of the gale wondered to see them quarrelling about such things, and they having so fruitful an island, where the air was so wholesome, and the sun not too strong or the cold too bitter, and where there was such a plenty of honey and acorns, and of milk and of fish, and of corn, and room for them all. Great grandeur they were living in, and their druids about them, at the palace of Tavir. And Amagan went to them, and it is what he said, that they must give up the kingship there and then, or they must leave it to the chance of battle. And he said he asked this in revenge for the death of Eith, of the race of the Gael, that had come to their court before that time, and that had been killed by treachery. When the sons of Kermit Honeymouth heard Amagin saying such fierce words, there was wonder on them, and it's what they said, that they were not willing to fight at that time, for their army was not ready. We greet you, O sons of Mir, and see that you come prepared for war. We seek a delay so that we might decide whether to depart, to submit, to give battle. And in that time, we shall remain free from assault, free from assembly of battle, or from giving of hostages. If it were up to me, then battle it would be. It is not yours to answer, Eberdon. The sons of Mir... Refuse the request of the Tuatha Dé Then let your own bards give the judgment to you. For if they give false judgment, then they will die upon the spot. You give the judgment, Hamagin. I do so speak it. Let the land be left to them till we come again, to take it by force. Whither shall we go? We shall retreat to beyond nine waves. The men you have found are in possession... Over the nine green-necked waves of the sea advance ye. Unless by your power then be planted, quickly let the battle be prepared. I assign the possession of the land ye have found. If ye love, concede this award. If ye love not, concede it not. It is I that say this to you. This was the first judgment given in Erin. And at that, Amagin bade the men that were with him to go back to Inverskane, and to hurry again into their ships with the rest of the sons of the gale, and to go out the length of nine waves from the shore. And then he made his offer to the Tuatha Dé Danann, that if they could hinder his men from landing on their island, 
he and all his ships would go back again to their own country, and would never make any attempt to come again, but that if the sons of the Gael could land on the coast in spite of them, then the Tuatha Dé should give up the kingship and be under their sway. The Tuatha Dé Danann were well pleased with that offer, for they thought that by the powers of their enchantments over the winds and the sea, and by their arts, they would be well able to keep them from ever setting foot in the country again. So the sons of the Gael did as Amagin bade them, and they went back into their ship, and drew up their anchors and moved out to the length of nine waves from the shore. As soon as the men of day saw that they had left the land, they called upon the ancient fey powers, and they raised a great wind that scattered the ships of the gale and drove them from one another. But Amagin knew it was not a natural storm was in it. There was great confusion on the gale, for the ships were tossed to and fro and were likely to be lost. Nir, son of Mil, aboard a mighty vessel that was smashed upon the rocks, came to his death, and his body was cast on the shore, and it was buried in a small island that is now called Skil Michil. A brave man here was, leading the sons of the Gael to the front of every battle, and their help and their shelter in battle, and his enemies were in dread of his name. And Eramon, another of the sons of Mio, with his share of the ships, was driven to the left of the island, and it's hardly he got safe to land. The place where he landed was called Invercolpa, because Colpa of the sword, another of the sons of Mil, was drowned there, and he tried to get to land. Five of the sons of Mil in all were destroyed by the storm and the winds the men of day had raised by their enchantments, and there were but three of them left, Eber and Eramon and Amagin. Eber Don, son of Mil, was in command of a great ship that was parted from the others by the dint of the storm, and it was broken in pieces, and he himself and all with him were drowned, four and twenty men and women in all. Before Eberdon was swept into the sea, he called out, It is treachery our knowledgeable men are doing on us not to put down this wind. There is no treachery here. And Amagin climbed into the prow of the ship, raised his arms over the storm-tossed waves and angry water sprites, and leaning into the wind, he called softly, I invoke the land of Eriu, nourished by the fertile sea. Fertile be the fruit-strewn mountains, fruit-strewn be the showery wood, showery be the river of waterfalls, of waterfalls be the lake of deep pools, Deep pools be the hilltop well. A well of the clans be the assembly. An assembly of the kings be Tavir. Tavir be the hill of the clans. The clans of the sons of Meal. Of Meal be the boats, the ships. Let the lofty ship be Eriu. Lofty Eriu, forest deep voices. Deep voice charm of great cunning. The great cunning of the wives of Brace, the wives of Brace of Gwenye, the great lady Eriu, Eremon hath conquered her, Eir, Eba, have invoked for her. I invoke the land of Eriu. At that very moment, the wind died down, and the sea was instantly quiet again. Six women of their nobles were their losses on the sea and land from their setting out from Spain till then. These are their names. Buan, wife of Beel, Deal, wife of Dawn, Skena, the woman poet, wife of Amagin Whiteney. She died with them on the sea while they were coming to Erin. Fial, wife of Lugi, son of Eith, the wife of Eir and the wife of Mwyrhem, son of Bregan, were the other two. And those that were left of the sons of Meal and of the sons of the Gael landed then at Inverskain. And Amagin was the first to put his right foot on land, and when he stood on the shore of Erin, it is what he said, his voice echoing round the hills of Erin. 
I am a wind in the sea. I am a sea wave upon the land. I am the sound of the sea. I am a stag of seven combats. I am a hawk upon a cliff. I am a teardrop of the sun. I am the fairest of flowers. I am a boar for valor. I am a salmon in a pool. I am a lake in a plain. I am the excellence of arts. I am a spear that wages battle with plunder. I am a god who forms subjects. Who explains the stones of the mountains. Who invokes the ages of the moon. Where lies the setting of the sun. Who bears cattle from the house of Terra. Who are the cattle of Terra who love Terra? What man, what god forms weapons? In deep then, I invoke a poet, a poet of wind. In the night in which the sons of Meal came to Erin was the burst of Loch Luidech over the land in Westminster. And when Lugi, son of Eith, was bathing in the lake, and Fial, his wife, daughter of Meal, was bathing in the river that flows out of the lake, Lugi went to the place where was the woman, he being naked and desirous. And when she looked on him thus, she died of shame at once and from her is named the river with its creek. Downcast was Lugi after the woman's death, so that he said, Sit we here over the strand, store me the cold, chattering in my teeth, a great tragedy is the tragedy that has reached me. I tell you, a lady has died, whose fame kept growing, Feel her name from a warrior's naked desire upon the clean gravel. A great death is the death that has reached me. Harshly prostrated me. The nakedness of her husband, she looked upon him and rested here. And high on a hill overlooking the Inverskane, the three tall sisters stood watching the sons of Meal take their first faltering steps onto their new land. The great barred amigin of the white knee at their head, the warriors disembarked from their gently rocking ships and ambled with wide-eyed smiles amongst the new flowered meadows. They are here then, my sisters. So the wheel turns once again. So it has always been. Our land has died for the shame of it, and their land is newborn. It's time for us to withdraw under the ancient hills, for the time of man is upon us. And they turned away then, glancing back at the green fields, the deep lochs, and the ancient forests, knowing that with time, all of the she-folk would be only a distant memory for the young ones, as they would fight amongst themselves to establish homes for their clans. And yet, Eriu smiled sweetly to herself, for she knew the men of Erin would always find their lives touched by the gentle hands of the Fae. And so ends the Book of Invasions. In our next episode, we explore the fate of the children of Lear. And now for some listener feedback. You know we mentioned in the last episode that we couldn't see the reviews of the shows on iTunes? Well, our friend Greg Lemon from The Miss Show has kindly sent us a screenshot of those reviews. Oh, that's great. So we'd like to give a shout-out to Cogitator X, uh, I'm working out how to say this. I think it's Tlachtgar or something like that. Uh, 
Yes, Talatka. I'm sorry if we've got your name wrong. Yeah. And Mickey AMC, all of whom were kind enough to leave us a review. Thank you all so much. Yes, thank you. And thank you, Greg. Greg, of course, as many of you know, hosts the Myth Show podcast, which explores many of the implications of mythology in modern day society. You can find out how to find his show in our show notes. We'd now like to play a couple of promos for you. This is Mojo. And this is Sparrow. From, from the, the Wiggly and Way. Way. The Wiggly and Way is a pagan podcast that explores the many facets of living a magical lifestyle. We are two Wiccans practicing witchcraft in beautiful British Columbia, Canada. Join with us and explore your path on the Wiggly and Way. You can download us at thewigglyandway.libsyn.com. You can also find us using iTunes, we're at Podcast Pickle, and on Podcast Alley. Thanks, Thanks for, for walking the Wiggly and Way. Trying to find a poem by Taliesin? Not sure who the Morgan is? Need a good picture of Stonehenge? Curious about the latest archaeological finds from ancient Gaul? Hi, my name is Mary Jones, and all this and more can be found at my site, www.maryjones.us, where I run the Celtic Literature Collective, Jones's Celtic Encyclopedia, the Celtic News Update, and lots more. Again, that's www.maryjones.us. Hope I'll be seeing you. Thank you, Mary. You've just been listening to Mary Jones talk about her website, and we'd like to offer her a really big thank you for her help in getting this episode to you. At the end of the story, you heard Amagin speaking what is possibly the most famous poem in ancient Celtic literature, the Song of Amagin. There are many translations of this piece, and Mary helped us find the earliest and most accurate translation to bring to you. She also wrote a short commentary about the four sacred animals, the oldest animals in the world in Celtic mythology, and how these are reflected in the Song of Amagin. You'll find a link in the show notes to a page we've set up in the resources section. Here you can find Mary's thoughts as well as all the other translations we were able to find. Thank you very much, Mary. Without you, this episode would have been an awful lot harder. This episode is the last in the tales found within the Book of Invasions, and in the next few episodes we'll be bringing you some of the standalone tales from the Irish mythological cycle. So we wish you all a happy and enjoyable fortnight. Goodbye for now. Goodbye. Well, that wraps up this episode, and until next time, Slán Gavoya. You've been listening to the Celtic Myth Pod Show, available from CelticMythPodShow.com. We hope you've enjoyed the show and will stay tuned for the next episode. You can send us a quick email or voice feedback by emailing either Gary, that's G-A-R-Y, or Ruth, R-U-T-H, at CelticMythPodShow.com. You can chat to us in the forums on our website. The show notes for this episode can also be found on the website. We'd like to say a special thank you to Kulan's Hound, provided us with a theme music for our show. You heard Hag Hole at the beginning and are listening to The Skylark now. You can find out more about this foot-stomping band at www.sfhounds.com. And thanks again to Diane Arkinstone and Kim Robertson, whose music has been used for some of the incidental music in this podcast. You'll find links to their websites in our show notes.